Hello everybody. So today I want to make a brief video about some of the innovations that we're seeing in consumer electronics uh, at the CES show in Las Vegas. And it's been all over YouTube. I've watched a few of videos uh, made by major channels and, you know, it's, it's helpful to look at where uh, those big brands, where those startups see the world going. And, and I think CES has been uh, spot on on a lot of products in the past. And so I find it helpful um, to see what the future will look like. I find it helpful to, to learn from CES. And so here are three takeaways that I have from CES about future tech and about what the future of tech is going to look like. Uh, and this matters so much for so many of our investments in growth stocks because those growth stocks are at the heart of uh, what is called convergences between different technology and uh, you'll see energy and the fact that energy is trending towards zero has a lot to do um, uh, as, as a tailwind behind all of these technologies. So let me let me talk first of all about cars and this is something I've said multiple times on the channel but cars are what? Cars, in my view, they are consumer electronics. They're not bulky appliances anymore. By consumer electronics, what do I mean? I mean, they get better and they get cheaper year after year. And that means if you make a bulky appliance like a Ford or GM or BMW, you're making an appliance. Appliances go up in price every year uh, and they don't improve much every year, right? Look at washing machines. Have washing machines improved much? No, not really, and it's 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 not enough to just 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 add a add a, a LCD screen on it and say oh it's AI to actually really change the technology. Um, the same is true for cars, by the way. That's why we saw, for example, true innovation from Tesla moving from from a 12 volt to a 48 volt architecture. That's something that hadn't been on in 70 years. You wouldn't think that under the hood cars are the same since 70 years, but they've been the same for 70 years, and they just up update the outside of a look of the car and so coming coming to to cars and 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 what is a car today a car today in my view is a consumer electronics and when i when i look at this show and when i look many of the, the legacy brands mostly uh, japanese uh, brands and korean brands it's very clear that they are taking the path and seeing themselves as consumer electronics company and uh, the car that that really uh, stuck a chord with me is sony Sony is a consumer electronics company by excellence, and they partner with, with, with Honda for production, but they are planning on releasing their own car uh, by 2026, a Sony car. You know, Sony is known for, for the Walkman. It's a company known for MP3 players. And so this is clear to me that it's consumer electronics company that will do cars in the future, and, and maybe companies like Sony will be a more formidable competitor to Tesla. And maybe, and, and this is something we've heard for a very long time, but maybe Apple will have something to say about that. We, we've known for a while that Apple has been working on a car. Well, Apple is the ultimate consumer electronics company. What if, what if they make a car? My point here is that making consumer electronics is much, much, much closer to the manufacturing of EVs and making appliances is closer to the manufacturing of gas engines, which is why I think the competition to Tesla will not come from legacy. I think it will come either from established consumer electronics brand or from or for new for from new car manufacturers that are taking that consumer electronics angle all right i have another takeaway takeaway number 2 the takeaway number 2 is robots and ai everywhere everywhere and this has implications for uh, quite a few stocks actually for the brain of these machines it has clear implications for nvidia and amd that makes those gpus those gpus are, are so central to uh, uh, gpts and to uh, uh, over transformers and to uh, over recommendation systems all sorts of inference systems that we have in these machines um, they run on on on, on chips made by NVIDIA or AMD and other players in the field. So this has a big role to play. And then 
Tesla, Tesla arguably with, with, with Dojo and with a lot of the things that they do in self-driving, I would put both in the AI and the electric energy revolution category and Enphase is clearly in the electric energy revolution category. Why do I talk about energy when I talk about robots? It's because f think about how many households there are per robot today, likely none or, or, or very few compared to how many robots there are going to be per household, right? Are we all going to have a lawn mowing robot? Robot. Are we all going to have a vacuuming robot? And if you if you watch these videos on CES, you know the vacuuming robots today, they are getting really good. With, with, with water, with, with, with automatic trash um, filling, I mean, they, 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 are, they are getting much better. They, they are not the iRobots of 2007. They are not those gadgets anymore. They, they are getting much better. You also have robots for play, play with, with, with pets, play with kids. You have robots that clean windows. Windows. Um, there's also a relevant thing going on in industry, which is ima imagine when we're going to be able to have robots uh, working on construction sites, and this is this is an example of a, of, a, of a Hyundai excavator entirely automated. To me, this makes a lot of sense as these machines would be entirely automated. But look, this is all powered by energy. We are going to have an insane need for electric energy as these devices, in my view, inevitably become exponential. Because once and these devices are like consumer electronics, once you move into consumer electronics prices drop really really fast and these items become very affordable and thus the demand goes exponential this has tremendous implications for the future demand for electricity and and, and the two the two companies that revolutionize that electricity production to me are tesla and and phase clearly and lastly my takeaway number three and this is something that i've expressed multiple times on the channel but i think that's that's one of the next innovations that i really want to be investing in which is the decentralization of food and water and also food prep or and food food manufacturing true decentralization of that in my view is going to, to happen my, my example that i always use is we all make ice at home we don't go to the ice box downtown in the city right 120 years ago if you wanted ice uh, if you wanted a cold food uh, at home or, or if you wanted to store meats or anything you had a wood cabinet and on top of that wood cabinet you would put a giant ice cube and you would go get that giant ice cube at the ice box and the ice box would get the ice cube from some part of a country where it's really really cold and they would move it uh that was centralization of ICE. ICE is fully decentralized today. Nobody, nobody thinks twice about, you know, buying. I mean, some people buy ICE, but that's that, that's uh, more of a idiosyncratic use case. That's not the main use case. Most people make ICE at home, right? You get it in the fridge. I think this is going to happen for so many aspects of everything we do. Let me get those two appliances out of the way presented at CES, uh, which I think are very relevant. This is a this is a new appliance. This is a plan, an appliance that that that. Grew grills a steak perfectly indoor. Uh, I think it's very clever actually. Uh, cooking a steak the way you like it requires a lot of skill and with that you don't need that skill anymore. It's entirely done by the machine. It's kind of a toaster for steaks or a toaster for meat. Anyways, this disrupts gas, right? Because you don't need a gas stove anymore. You don't need a gas, uh, a gas grill anymore. You can just use a machine like that. And the same is true for grills themselves, right? This is an electric grill to grill things on, on on the electric today today we use uh, gas grills because we think they're so convenient right nobody uses gas grills for flavor it doesn't add any flavor but people say oh a gas grill is more convenient well imagine how convenient an electric grill is going to be so much more convenient and you, ju you just plug it into the wall and and, and you know th these things in my view they're going to get much 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 cheaper uh, going forward because it is consumer electronics and because it follows the these cost curves that we know so well well, but that's not it. You had this present this um, this other company presenting something that I find very interesting. Um, ice cream, right? We all we I mean we all we don't all buy ice cream, but if you like ice cream, you go to the store, you buy an ice cream jug. This is a comp This is a this is a, an appliance that makes ice cream. It works like a Keurig. You put a pot and it makes an ice cream. Uh, you know, think about how exponential Keurigs or Nespresso's in or Senseo in Europe or Nespresso. Think about how exponential it got. Uh, you know, you were living in 2005, nobody had them. Fast forward to 2010, everybody had them. 
could could something could machines like this entirely revolutionize you know separate industries like could we move into a world where people just make everything at home because that's the point it, it's much cheaper when you start making things at home we have an example here this is a cocktail maker this is something that will make a cocktail for you at home but this is perhaps um, a relevant example to to many of my viewers this example may may uh, maybe even more relevant um, actually there's a lot of very serious studies on decentralization of food through uh, beer and beer making, especially in the United States. And and we know that uh, uh, um, craft beer or decentralized beer making, uh, you know, has reached the level of a science in, in, in the U.S., so much so that many of these giants have gotten disrupted and, and, and people like these stronger, uh, often better tasting beers that, that they either make at home or buy from a micro a brewery from a local company that has that has entirely uh, you know taken in house a process that used to happen in major factories so entirely entirely decentralized well let's push that decentralization of beer a little further this is an, this is an example of a machine uh, that cost four hundred and twenty dollars uh, and it it makes forty liters of beer and what you do is 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 you put water in there and you put three ingredients and you have forty liter of beer draft beer and uh, to give you and the machine does it all for you in two weeks and it's all fully automated you don't have to think about anything um and you just need to buy a a, a, a refill it's sort of a pod it i mean it, it's, it's in a pouch but it kind of looks like a curic pod what's very interesting is that the cost of that refill is less than um uh, 30 um 30 bucks so if you actually calculate the cost of of one beer the cost of one one one, um, not one pint, but the equivalent of, to on one, of one bottle of beer, so like a 12-ounce bottle. If you calculate the cost, I, I, I just played with this and I, and ended up calculating that a, 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 um, a glass of draft beer at home with a machine like this up pay, paying the high cost of the ingredients as sold by the manufacturer, right? This is just like you buy your Nespresso pod from the company Nespresso. We all know that's not going to happen. We all know there's going to be knockoffs of those pods. But but paying the full price for those pods, that, that, that brings the price of a single beer down to about 30 cents, to 30 cents. So, uh, and, 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 you know, b- based on the reviews, people are saying that this is ju- just as good as anything you would get from an expensive $8 beer that you get at some craft brewery, exactly the same from those reviews. So 30 cents. Imagine if you get into a situation where people end up buying, you know, knockoff off-brand pods, which most often are just as good. I mean, the off-brand Nespresso pods are just fine if you if you drink espresso. So imagine how much you could collapse that. Could you collapse it to 10 cents? You could probably collapse it to 10 cents. You could probably collapse making a glass of beer at home to 10 cents. And so... I realize this is a lengthy explanation for beer, but you, you, you quickly realize that you make the same calculation in your, in, in your mind for just about everything. For an ice cream maker, right? How much is a cup of ice cream? Is it 10 cents too in 2030? Uh, how about how about yogurt? Uh, you may remember I've shown you, I've shown you uh, in, in a prior video and in phase I, I had shown machines that make yogurt. How, how, how much would that cost to grow your own yogurt at home? Would it be 10 cents? How about, how about growing mushrooms? How about growing vegetables? This entirely collapses the cost of these products that are today standalone companies making billions of dollars. This and this entirely makes them irrelevant by having you able to just make this stuff at home in machines that are you know riding declining cost curves and, and, and that will be super 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 cheap you know how much is a coffee machine today a coffee machine today on black friday it's you know 898 at walmart right i'm not saying these are going to get that cheap but they, but they are not going to be expensive uh, the last two this is a this is a um, electric composter composter which which again is is, is very, very interesting you know just just very sleek um, and something again that that used to be much much more bulky and, and entirely centralized. If you go for waste management companies uh, for your trash, so that might be a a, a um, you know a disruption right there. And of course, my favorite disruption of them all. Uh, 
well, as far as, as things that haven't happened yet, but I think are going to happen, which is the disruption of water or utilities. Uh, this is a video that, I, that I've tweeted. I've tweeted this video where, where the makers of, of this uh, system, uh, like literally outright, it replaces a well. He says, it replaces a well, it replaces your water utility. Uh, this machine, which is about the size of a uh, slightly bigger than an than a air conditioner for a normal house, about the size of air conditioner, produces enough water for your whole house and all it takes is energy so the, the seven to nine times energy produced on the roof through solar panels that tony Siba talks about um we're gonna have a use for that 7x more energy than we need uh, we we we're gonna find crazy amount of needs for that electricity uh, that's coming and that's gonna create a lot of deflation a whole lot of deflation in my view is gonna be created by these technologies and of course ces is early it's presenting things that are five years before their prime time likely but uh, i think that i think that spells out a very bright future all of this all of these uses for for energy and it makes me supremely confident to invest in the future which is not oil and gas the future is not oil and gas the future is electric energy in tesla and in phase and i'm so happy to own these stocks so anyways these are three small takeaways from ces uh, it was a bit of a different video today obviously no investment advice no financial advice whatsoever uh, i hope you were entertained please like please subscribe thank you for watching and have a wonderful day